KJ is the only guest <laughs> who has um, not only suggested what he would like to make, but actually provided me a recipe mm -hmm. with what was an awesome idea. So I get this recipe. It's on Instagram. It's a Reels. It's a knockoff of Popeyes. I love Popeyes. <laughs> I love spice. Yeah. Here's the thing. So we went back and forth and I said, hey, how do you feel about doing wings in either the air fryer or the oven? You know, because I don't generally like fry food on my countertop. Okay. KJ says. There's only one way to fry wings yeah. and it's not in the air fryer. It's not baked. It's, 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 it's grease. It's hot grease. It's like grandma used to do it, how your mom used to do it. Mm -hmm. You batter it up, you dip it in that grease. It's nice and crispy and juicy and flavorful. So if we go, if we go take it to a new level, we got to use some oil. We got to use some cooking oil today. Okay, There's but, only one way. But here's the thing. So I did it. I turned my kitchen <laughs> into a test kitchen. Uh -huh. I had stuff everywhere. And the Roto-Rooter guy showed up while I'm making wings. And also <laughs> that public emergency alert thing that went off on everybody's phone at the same time went off the minute I put my wing in the hot oil, which made me think I set off the fire alarm. I did not. Yeah. Here's my ultimate problem with this. Mm -hmm. They had no flavor. So let me ask you, when you tested this the other day, mm -hmm. did you, you used grease, you used oil? You tried yes. it? And, got and it. my oil thermometer. Yes. And it was, was it a disaster? <laughs> it wasn't, I mean, if I had to eat it for lunch, I could have. But I just cut my losses, KJ. It's very we, rare that I like, that it just didn't turn out. It just didn't turn out. And you wasn't confident enough to do it. No, and me. I thought about like, look, we're just gonna make this an episode where I know it's gonna be terrible <laughs> and we're just gonna roll with it. And I decided I cannot do that to my friend KJ. Yeah. I also, if we're gonna be honest and real about this, I am wearing an apron for the first time on this show because quite honestly, I am <laughs> tired of trying to figure out what to wear on a cooking show. Everything is the same. I know what to wear yeah. on the sidelines. Yeah. I know what to wear on normal TV. Yeah. This stresses me out. So I finally said, I'm, I'm gonna I'm I'm cover it up. I'm gonna cover it up. I don't understand up. why this took me so long to figure out. And this is your first time? No. <laughs> <laughs> You did have some good highlights. Spider-Man here, in case anybody <laughs> would like to look that one up. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give you a context on that nickname, by the way. Okay. So you remember truck driver, right? Clint McDonald? Yes, who I forgot that that was his nickname until a couple yes. of weeks ago. Yes. He was the one that gave me that name. And I said, bro, stop calling me that. That's not my name, I'm not no damn Spider-Man. He's like, yeah, you Spider-Man, I'm gonna call you that. You got long arms, long legs, and you Spider-Man. He, he kind of nailed it. Yes, and when, and when I tell you, once Coach Norton got a hold of it and the steam started picking up, like I just I had no choice but to embody that nickname. And so I started shooting my web when I tackled people, made a big play, and the fans loved it. And so I mean, imagine what nickname you would have gotten had, had Big Mac not come up with one. Like, what what would a, I have had? I don't know. I would just been some regular, like... Joe I mean, Blow. Maybe you wouldn't have had a nickname at all, and that would have been super sad. <laughs> that would have been pretty pathetic. Well, Can you... not pathetic. Yeah, yeah pretty I pathetic. Mean, yeah. I guess I guess Bobby don't have a nickname. I don't think I want to start this conversation. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go down that road. I don't know. Don't you just call Bobby Hall of Famer? Don't you just call him First Ballot. First Ballot Call him First Ballot Hall, Hall, Hall of Famer. When did you know he was... I, We're saying this as if he's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Let's just replay this when he does go into the Hall of Fame. Um, when he solidified it, yeah, it's a good question. Cause the standard is ten years. Like you, it's not the, it's not that you have to get, but when you get ten, when he got ten, I'm like, oh, he's for sure in. With all his stats, with all his accolades, all his tackles, like you get the ten years, you're pretty much in. Here, you want me to and so he's on year twelve. Go probably get That's fifteen. A, it's, it, it's. It's impressive. Yeah. What was your first impression of Bobby? Because you were there a year before he was. So, like, super, like, he was quiet. Yes. You wouldn't think Bobby was quiet, but the dude was quiet. He had, like, this energy to him, like, yeah, I'm here, I'm a cool guy, but I'm here for a reason. I'm about to take somebody's job, I don't care whose it is, and I'm about to be the man. That's the, that was my first impression of this guy. And um, he did just that. He, he did that. Plus more. Uh, what was your first impression of Pete Carroll? I met him at the Combine um, at a Mississippi State and high energy, obviously high energy, funny, ch charismatic. 
Yeah. And um, the first thing I remember him, he asked Coach Norton after my interview, he looked at him and he's like, what you think about this guy? You think he'd be one of us? And Norton looked like, I don't know, but maybe. And so- In was, front of you? Right in front of me at the combine. And so I was like, I hope I could be one of y'all one day <laughs> in the fourth round, pick number 99. Maybe you know, some stuff could work out. And um, yeah, super cool dude. Super cool guy. Love him. Yes. Most consistent person I think I've ever yes, been around. Love him. Love him. Without question. Yes. So we're going to go three quarters of a teaspoon. That's a quarter cup so, or a quarter spoon. So you need three of these. Should we call them a quarter Devon? A quarter what? A quarter Devon. <laughs> I missed that joke. <laughs> Witherspoon. I just oh, came up with it. It clearly wasn't that good. That was clever. No, it wasn't. That was clever. He's not going to like it either. <laughs> like, no, nobody in that locker room is going to say, you know what, Jen, you are so clever with that joke. Hey, but you, you know, know what? what they most often say? You're a dork. Who says that? I wish they would say that. <laughs> I wish they would say that. We're not playing those games. All right. I'm going to get. I'm gonna do four. I'm going to do okay. four. I'm not going to disagree with you I'm on gonna that. I'm going to do four. We're we'll gonna listen to Mike B on this one. Okay. Well then, I can't wait to see what you do with the dill and the parsley over there. Dill? Dill. I haven't even heard of dill, so. Well, so. <laughs> we're gonna you know just, my we're gonna be a little smart. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you know, okay, so here's another one. So my roommate, my college roommate, mm -hmm. her name is also Jennifer. Go Cook. She's from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> one of the first things she would say to me was, What's your deal, pickle? Red country bumpkin. <laughs> country. That what? What's your deal, pickle? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. That's just for my own entertainment. Dill has a pretty distinctive smell. Like it's it's very fresh. If you have fresh dill, like from the farmers market, I love it. It really brightens up a salad. Okay. You can't smell anything. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. What is this made from? Like, is this a, it's dill. It's a it's an actual, herb. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's an herb, and it's really fine. The the dill again. If you get it at the farmers market, it's it looks. Gosh, it's just super. It's just super fine, and all of those. See how small that is. Mm -hmm. That's the size of dill, but it grows like a frond, like a like a like mm -hmm. a fern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's kind of got that same kind of look. I'm doing a terrible job explaining for people who actually know what dill looks like. No. Um, and then you dry it and you chop it up and that's what it does. I so anytime it. you've got like your ranch, look, mm -hmm. that's what you see in ranch oh. dressing. You see it? Oh, ho, ho. that's what it is. What was the best thing that your mom made at home or your dad? <laughs> funny story. Um, not funny story, but, uh, my parents, my parents split up. Right. And so my dad, when we moved into his house, he made the same meal every single time. And it was, you know, the, the, chicken, uh, the chicken tenders from like Safeway? Yeah. He made the chicken tender wraps every time I went to his house. So he got a wrap, some lettuce, and some ranch, and some hot sauce. When I say every weekend I went to my dad's <laughs> house, this man made this every single time. And so I mastered it when I got to, on my own, got to college, that's what I made. And um, so that was our go-to when I went to dad's house. And my mom made the green bean casserole. Okay, now I'm gonna have you take some chives out. Yeah. I'm you introduced guys, to so much today. Okay. I love well, it. Well, I mean, it's not like I'm teaching you to change the world or anything, <laughs> but we are expanding our horizons. Guys, yes. you might remember when John and Tracy Schneider were on the show, Tracy Schneider was telling me about the scissors that cut herbs, and guess what? She sent me a pair! We see you, Tracy. So I'm going to have you cut some chives. Hold Look up. This. Does, does Schneider know what he's doing in the kitchen? John Schneider. Tracy really knew what okay, she was doing. Okay, yeah, in the I know kitchen. John. Yeah, I know what he's doing in the kitchen. <laughs> we know John. It was a blast. They were was, awesome. They were great. Yeah. Okay, so these are fresh chives, also an herb. Yes. Okay. This is really what they look like when they come out of the garden. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have you take, just cut them. Mm -hmm. Here. This is so fancy. Watch my fingers. Why do I feel like you're getting a little <laughs> aggressive with this? I've never seen this type of scissors. I've never mm. seen dill seasoning. Jen, you I are can't, something else. You are going to go to the grocery store and Natalie's going to be like, why do I suddenly have dill seasoning yes. and chives? And she's going to be so impressed when I bring some scissors home like this. You know, you you know gotta, what? Maybe don't give them to her for a birthday present. I'm just going to oh, say nah, this right yeah. now. Like, If we're, if we're yes. on the lines of presents, 
this is not a present. And I, I mean, it is for And me, I but. suck already at gift giving. <laughs> I gave her a, um, <laughs> her birthday September 4th. What kind of cake did I? I gave her the total opposite cake that she likes. She's like, babe, what are you doing? I don't, <laughs> I don't like carrot cake, but I like carrot cake. <laughs> I have to say, it does not surprise me at all mm -hmm. that you have started your own foundation yeah. since leaving football. Mm -hmm. Because I always knew, I just like, first of all, your whole class I knew was very special, special. in that regard. Yes. yes. Doug, Sherm, yeah. Malcolm, it's very special. Yeah. yeah. You guys all had things going on outside of football. Mm -hmm. When did you start thinking about your foundation? My rookie year. Really? <laughs> I tried to start with my rookie year. But um, the woman, she was like, she wasn't the right person for me. She was like, yeah, $50,000, I can help you get started. I'm like, hold up, I don't think it works like that. And so I literally did everything, all my off the field stuff, out of pocket. When I went to Kenya, built water wells, when I had my football camps, when I redid the, the, um, the teacher's you know, homeroom at school, all of it was out of pocket. And so I said, KJ, you're retired. Stop using your money and start raising money so people can help you do stuff you want to do in the future. So, Yeah, so what's the foundation? So it's the Right Way Foundation. And if you it. know me, you know I'm super passionate about kids. And the Right Way Foundation is helping kids understand financial literacy. So credit, what is debit, compound interest, taxes, how to open a bank account. I, I, have, I taught my second class yesterday and I'm like a real like legit professor. I'm, I'm up there teaching the kids. And so it's been really, really fun. The kids are engaging. So we're gonna have a 10 week course throughout this year. We're gonna take them Christmas shopping at the end for a little bonus. I think that's why most of them are there. Cause we get to go Christmas shopping. <laughs> you know, but, um, everybody's incentivized differently. They're incentivized. But um, we really, I really wanna change lives and I wanna end this rat race that a lot of people are in. Living check to check, getting in bad debt, making bad decisions and so no matter if you're in high school or an adult, you can know about finances. So I'm thoroughly excited. Yeah. And you were always one that if something piqued your interest, you were going to go research it. I'm going to go get it. Yeah. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. We had a lot of conversations like that. Mm -hmm. I would say if I ever had a question about what was going on, I came to you. <laughs> you came to me. <laughs> well, it was you and Bobby. It was, your, mm -hmm. it was that spot in the room. Mm -hmm. It was Malcolm when he was there. Yeah. But I knew... That, and I would preface it, and I would say things like, I don't know how to start the conversation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Do, I, I don't know how to start the conversation. I don't know if this is the right question to ask, um, but could you help me, like, understand? Well, let's just, I may get a little nerdy here. Let's get a little nerdy. Let's just talk about the linebacker position. Like, linebackers have to be well-rounded individuals. We got to know how to work with different people. We got to know how to cover different people on the football field. Like, a lot is asked for a linebacker. And um, when I look at us and my particular group, like, we got it. Like, we understood it. We we're well coached. We we're great off the field, on the field, great with our teammates. Like, you didn't hear about linebackers being a problem in the locker room. No. Never. In fact, I've never, ever thought of that group as being a problem in the locker we room. We weren't whining. We weren't complaining. We weren't starting no drama. We were the, we were the, uh, the dudes that kept the team together. And so um, that's what we did. And so what, what I did, what Bobby did, it's a legacy. It's a standard. When you come to the Seahawks, this is how we act, this is how we operate. When Bobby leaves, I'm sure Jordan Brooks will carry on that torch. Would, you, would the rest of your teammates agree that you guys are the ones that kept your locker together or locker room together, or is this going to spark another debate? I don't care what they think. <laughs> I really don't. But the proof is in the pudding. Uh, <laughs> no, but un, un, I mean, un, honestly, okay, honestly, Jen, like, it was a, it was a team effort well, to an extent. I, to an extent, but um, I, I just look at us, like un think about it, Jen, 10 years, oh, KJ Wright, 12 years, well, 11, 11 as a Seahawk, Bobby Wagner, like, like leadership, you're the voice, you're the voice of reason, you get it, you understand it, like, we're looking to you to carry this thing, and so. Also, it is, it is, it is true, and I've said this many times, right, different position groups need to have a different personality, right? Your pass 100%. rushers, your pass rushers, <laughs> Michael Bennett, I'm talking about you, have a very different personality than you do, or than a kicker, or than your offensive lineman. Totally different. <clears throat> Each position group, I, and I've covered teams a long time. Yeah. By and large, 
all offensive linemen have a similar personality. <laughs> yes. They yes. have to. All pass rushers have a pretty sim. Now, it comes out in different ways. They're mm -hmm. all very unique individuals, but... Yes, and then talk about the talk about the DBs. They have to be. I wasn't going to talk about the DBs or the wide receivers because it's going to get me in trouble. Let's talk about them. They're the flashy <laughs> guys. They're the exciting ones. Look at me. Hey, I'm the wide receiver. That's that's their person, and that's okay. That's what make the team cool. You look at the quarterback spot. They have to be professional. They have to be leaders. You know, just say the right things all the time. Like that's the quarterback spot. And so the beauty of football is that you take all these personalities all these different backgrounds and you blend it together, that's where the magic happens. And if you have a good coach that knows how to like bring out the best in guys, know how to suppress guys, know what to do, that's like, that's where champions are made. And so we had a perfect blend. And this team right now has a perfect blend too. It's a good, that's good. It's a really good blend. Pete just keeps doing what he does. He's a goat. Oh, he is. He's a goat. And um, you see, he said, I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun. I'm having so much fun. And because you can look at him and tell, like, he got, he's always had this pep in his step, but yeah. he got that real. He's, he's really sprinting during he practice has that these pep days. In his step now. <laughs> I'm watching you, coach. And so he loves his team. And the, they're all bought in. They believe in his philosophy. And so they're making some noise thus far. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. I Cook You Measure is presented by Safeway, who welcomes everyone at the table through the Nourishing Neighbors program. You can donate in stores or get involved with the Back to Action campaign. Our food banks need volunteers to ensure no one in Washington goes hungry. Make a difference in the fight against food insecurity by using the QR code. And let's get back to action together.